this opportunity to come and speak to all of you on this burning issue of land acquisition bill that is in, uh, has been in the news for the last few months. Friends, it's a uh, pleasure for me to come to IAC, especially to the uh, programs organized by the answer because I find that in science campuses, campuses teaching science or research institutes with um, where people with science backgrounds are there, the interest in such issues is often very limited. And I find as this, I have come here more than four or five times to speak usually on uh, issues are related to the agrarian sector and I have each time found that there is a lively audience which after the whatever little I speak there is also a very lively interaction and some of them whom I have uh, during the course of these uh, small uh, interactions they have later also continued to keep in touch some do mail at times on some issues so I really find it nice to come and speak to Thank you uh, for giving me this opportunity. What is this so much of interest or so much of you and cry about the land acquisition ordinance and the present 2015 land acquisition uh, bill? Why is there so much you and cry? That is something to be understood. We all know that land has been acquired by the Indian government or, uh, or the whichever administration was here, even from the days of the British uh, colonial rule here, uh, uh, on the basis of the 1894 Land Acquisition Act. This Land Acquisition Act has been in, uh, has uh, continued till very recently to be implemented and whatever land was acquired in India especially by the government was under the on the basis of this 1894 Land Acquisition Act. But over a decade ago there were a lot of demands that there should be a repeal of this Land Acquisition Act of 1894 and there should be a, an act which would keep in mind the interest of the landholders the agriculture workers and the other dependents on land. And there were also there is also a particular context in which this kind of a demand had come. There was large scale land acquisition going on in different parts of the country. There were there were also protests and at times there have been violent kind of uh, repression in some cases and this was the context in which this particular discussion came. And around 2007, there were two acts which the government proposed. That is, when the UPA 1 was there, there were two uh, acts which were initially proposed. One was the Land Acquisition Act, uh, Land Acquisition Bill, since it was not yet passed, and there was a rehabilitation and resettlement. Organizations like ours, well, these cannot be separate. They should be uh, 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 together and they, uh, they should be part and parcel of one comprehensive legislation. So then, based on discussions in the parliamentary standing committee and all that, the, uh, the land acquisition uh, bill as well as the rehabilitation and resettlement bill were brought together into what was known as land acquisition rehabilitation resettlement bill. It is another matter that later in the UPA 2, when this land acquisition rehabilitation resettlement bill was brought, it was given a more uh, uh, more catchy or uh, kind of name, right to fa uh, fair uh, land acquisition and uh, of this kind, how re rehabilitation and resettlement would be fair and just, that is what they wanted to convey. When this Land Acquisition Act was being, uh, bill was being discussed, the All India Kisan Sabha, we did meet the Standing Committee. 
and there were seven Tantris at that time. Initially, it was Ram Gopal Yadav was in charge of the Sandy Tantri on the rural development, followed by uh, we had Kalyan Singh and Sumitra Mahajan, both BJP leaders who headed the parliamentary standing committee. So it was an inclusive project in the, in the sense that it tried to collect the information, collect the opinions of wide sections of the society on what should be the nature of this land acquisition and rehabilitation resettlement legislation that is going to come. So despite there, uh, there being some differences that organizations like ours had, there were also some progressive considerations which were retained in the bill that was placed during the UPA 2. Significant being that whenever land is being acquired, the consent of the landholder should be taken into account. Secondly, there was also there, there was a provision that how for government for public purpose, if you are taking then around 70 percent, and for if it is for a private or, or public private partnership, then you should have 80 percent consent to be taken, and so on. Then there was the important principle of the social impact assessment that was also included in this, and along with that, there was also some safeguards to ensure that the food security of the country is not hampered in an uh, adverse manner. So these uh, provisions mainly were there and there were also provisions for compensating the land losers. There were different suggestions mentioned in this uh, legislation. But what we found, for instance in the rehabilitation and resettlement, there were a lot of provisions, about 25 things uh, listed, like you should have a primary health centre nearby, there should be roads, there should be portable water in all uh, resettlement areas and these kind of things. But in the end, you had one line saying, if any or all of these cannot be given to the people who have lost land, then the reason should be mentioned. Implying that, you need not give anything at all. So it was a continuous struggle that we had to have. Till the last minute, when the bill was brought into the parliament. And since I had been involved at every stage in the interaction with the government and in bringing the amendments that we wanted, the government came up with 156 amendments to the original bill which was uh, discussed by the parliamentary standing committee and agreed upon. And how did it come? These 156 amendments, like we were, in the, we were supposed to receive it Today evening, we went to Jaira Pradesh and he said, you will get it by 9 o'clock. Then you find that at 9 they say, you will get it by 12. Then 3 in the morning. Finally, we got the 156 amendments at 9 in the morning and they told us by 11 our amendments should be there. So there was some element of uh, uh, some urgency that they had and they didn't want a proper discussion, that kind of an uh, impression the government did not We instead of moving amendments to it, we just wrote a letter to the then speaker, Mira Kumar, telling that this is a deliberate attempt to subvert the established parliamentary norms because it has not been circulated to all members of parliament and uh, on such important issue, um, you cannot just hurry. What happened then is that the speaker intervened and so it would not be placed that day. The government had to withdraw. The government went ahead with one more session of meeting all political leaders, different parties. And then they came up with their uh, bill in the parliament. It was passed with only around 23 people from the left who voted against the bill. And there, all the, uh, those from the left moved amendments to many of the provisions, provisions in the bill. But they were defeated because left doesn't have a big support in the parliament. Nevertheless, even the 
organizations like the Sons of Our Police that given the 1894 Act, the 2013 Act was a far, uh, was a step ahead in the right direction. Though it had its own problems, there, had, there were some progressive uh, elements too. This government, the BJP government, which has taken over around a year ago, when the BJP was in the opposition, I mentioned before you that it was Sumitra Mahajan and Kalyan Singh who were the chairpersons of the standing committee. They claimed at that time, if you listen, if you can listen to the speeches of Sushma Swaraj or Arun Jaiti, at that time, they claimed that this was actually their baby. This Land Acquisition Act of 2013 was actually theirs and there was a lot of bonhomie between the Congress and the BJP and the Congress also agreed to accommodate some of the demands of the BJP like for instance, there was a provision in their, in their draft that whenever land is acquired, especially for irrigation projects, then they, uh, the people who lose land would be given land in return. But that would mean directly in Gujarat as, uh, and this Narmada region, they, they would have to be compensated not just in terms uh, in money terms but also land for land. So in, when it, uh, though it was passed in the Rajya Sabha, in the Lok Sabha, when it came to the Rajya Sabha, the government came up with this amendment and it was actually something agreed upon by both BJP and the Congress and many other parties. Now, this government after coming up, one of the first things it did is to totally revert its position. It's a reversal, it is a new term difference. And they said, no question of consent, no question of social impact assessment, for under section 10A about five major for infrastructure for they have also added one that for housing for the poor and such things. No need of social impact assessment, no need of seeking the consent of the people. And along with that, even there is no need for this food security concern to be kept. We, there was also a clause that if land is acquired and not being utilized after a particular period that will be reverted back to the landowners. And uh, landowners are, they had also brought about the land bank uh, concept. We were opposed to that. We were of the opinion that it should go back to the land owner itself or it should be used for some kind of a uh, land redistribution to the land. This was our opinion. So these uh, government first came with an amendment with an ordinance on December um, in the, towards the last of the, uh, December in which these aspects were withdrawn. There is no need for uh, returning back the land within that particular period and also that uh, the jurisdiction of courts there was some issue that the last act also had the ju jurisdiction of the court that it can only be challenged in the high court it cannot be challenged at the lower level, these kind of issues where the poor uh, farmer or the agriculture worker cannot access this uh, recourse to uh, judiciary. So we had objected to that also and the then government had made some changes. But now even here, empowering the collector in a big way and even officials if they are uh, having some lapses on their part, not holding them responsible, that they cannot, they, there cannot be any punishment for these officials. These kind of things were incorporated. But within six months, they made a lot of effort. They tried uh, meeting different political parties and uh, came up with it in the Lok Sabha. But in the Rajya Sabha, they were not able to push through because they don't have the numbers there. Then the land ordinance lapsed. The ordinance was reissued. When it was reissued, it was reissued with some more changes. Rather, while all of us were demanding that the act should be strengthened, 
what happened is they also added one more thing saying that on both sides of the expressway, one kilometer can be taken over. Um, in the, um, that was also allowed. So one kilometer on both sides of the expressway. Then basically it was very clear that it is promoting corporate um, land grab as well as real estate speculation. That is what was happening. So one is the struggle within the parliament that did take place. But when this first ordinance was brought itself, we as an organization of the peasantry, we feel that this is not a struggle just which can be fought and won only by the Kisan Sama. We feel that the broadest unity should be built on this particular issue. We tried to build a unity and we brought around, around 300 organizations of the peasantry, of the agriculture workers, Dalit groups, Adivasi organizations and also many of the civil society organizations like the National Alliance for People's Movement which includes Narmada Bacha Vahantolas and such groups. And this ordinance was immediately met with the burning of the ordinance across the country in more than 300 districts on January 30th. And then when the second ordinance also we did have but before that on February 24th we had a massive protest in uh, New Delhi at the parliament seat. This had also activists like the anti-corruption crusader Anna Hazare coming and joining on a platform of the Kisan Sabha and this broad platform which now we have called as the Pu Adhikar An. Interestingly, from just a, a movement to oppose the land acquisition ordinance, it has now turned into a movement for land rights. Right. Land rights. So, uh, and uh, we have also come up with some, uh, for instance, when there was a campaign for uh, about ghar vapsi, we said it's not, we don't want ghar vapsi, we want zameen vapsi. The zameen vapsi where land has been taken over, but nothing is happening on that land. We have been demanding that it should be given back to the landowners and the landers. In some areas, there are efforts to also occupy them. That is the next phase of struggle which we all can visit. Due to this mass mobilization that we have done, not just in the, in the capital city, but we have also had across the country this time. Even Bangalore we had, in Karnataka we had a Padayatra of more than 1000 kilometers in the state and culminating in over 50,000 people uh, at the Freedom Park, which had 12 different organizations coming together here. So similarly, state after state, district in, in districts, we have had this kind of protests and padayatras, and also a signature campaign where about five crore signatures we are um, planning to collect. It is uh, on uh, the process is on. So th all these uh, activities together as culminated in the government going on the back and coming with a uh, joint group of the parliament to look into this uh, land acquisition rehabilitation uh, resettlement legislation. But again the parliamentary group is in a big way it is it's a lopsided presence of the BJP having much greater number from uh, Congress from the Rajya Sabha, there are a few people even from Lok Sabha, but from the left there is only one single member in this particular committee. So this committee is likely to push through the major uh, positions that the government stands for. Especially the Prime Minister himself is very keen to push through the land acquisition ordinance. We are not expecting much uh, reversal of their earlier stance in the committee. So there is need for greater struggle force. So this is the entire the situation that the present land acquisition uh, legislation is in. What is it that, why is this kind of an unprecedented opposition to this land acquisition legislation? That is also interesting to know. Because I, I have been working at the Kisan Sabha Center for the last six years. 
no issue has managed to galvanize the rural population in the manner in which this land and uh, ordinance has been. We have arrived, we have traveled many times to the districts, to the uh, villages, we have tried to mobilize on various other issues, primarily against the neoliberal economic uh, policies, the entire gamut of neoliberal economic policies. But the, but the kind of response we have got in this case, that has never happened. It is also this uh, over time with the last two decades of neoliberal policies being implemented. There is a deliberate policy of operating the peasantry and dispossessing the, uh, the peasantry of the land which is their sole source of livelihood security as well as food uh, uh, security of their families and the country. So this process is on. And certain other factors also. There has been an uh, unprecedented unseasonal rains as well as rain hail storms which has hit more than two crore hectares across the country. The government's insensitive handling of this natural calamity that also has led to a rising discontent among the rural mass. And uh, they are seeing how the government is more keen to promote corporate profiteering and they are not interested in actually addressing the issues that the rural poor as well as the peasantry are raising. So probably because of all this and probably because different groups, you see we have also had, uh, when we have brought together 300 groups on this issue, on a, uh, to build the issue based unity. These 300 groups are not all homogeneous entities with similar kind of ideas. There are different. But processes which went into evolving our own positions on the first land acquisition rehabilitation resettlement bill, which was brought by the Congress at UPA, and the kind of convergence of our positions, that also had a role in being able to build this kind of community. So, the BJP government is going to pursue. The opposition also comes, we have seen, there have been different spots of resistance to this kind of indiscriminate position. In everywhere, even in a telephone state like Bengal, at one time there has been some issues related to the land acquisition and the kind of uh, um, conflict between the state and the landholders or the dependents on land. The left has accepted that this is a, there were some mistakes and they have evolved, their, their position has evolved over time. And, and that was most visible during the uh, land acquisition bill which was brought with the UPA government, the kind of position that emerged during that time. And that position, we managed to rally around the other groups around that position. That is why uh, probably we could build such a unprecedented unity against this draconian land position of this. Some of the other reasons why we are um, opposing or the peasantry is opposing is also to be noted. Even if you talk about the 1894 Land Acquisition Act, we say it is draconian, it is colonial by British uh, administration it was brought in. But this Land Acquisition Act when it was being discussed, even the British people involved with the preparation of the legislation, they were also very clear that though they are the colonial masters that time, they were clear that how things should be worked. They were not in favor of the eminent, eminent domain of the state, meaning that even for private purpose, you can take land without consent of the people. They were very clear that for the government purpose, they were taken. But if you see the debates which went into uh, during the, uh, the time the Land Acquisition Act was uh, brought about by the British, they are very clear that for private purposes the state cannot use this uh, eminent domain. But now, in effect, what has happened under the Modi government is the Modi government is telling even for 
in the name of infrastructure, in the name of public-private partnerships, many things which they have broadly defined public, uh, public purpose to in include almost everything under the sun, under public purpose. And for all these, there would be no requirement of seeking consent or having a social impact. And now they say that while one, uh, one kilometer on both sides of expressway, they have allowed to be taken under this uh, land ordinance, they are now saying that we have given a job to the one member of every family of agriculture. So what, what is the job? Firstly, no one defines what is this job. When we, uh, during the discussion on the earlier bill, we were very clear that whatever job is given should be given to all employable adults of the affected family. We were very clear. And we also put one more thing into it that the wages of such a job would not be less than three times the minimum wages of the agriculture workers in that particular state. And it should be indexed to the inflation because there should be some check on what is the kind of but this government is now claiming that one job per agriculture worker family. There are, let us say, five members in the family, five employable and one getting a job and even that what is the kind of job is not explained. So how would the family sustain? That is an uh, issue here. And in the earlier uh, act, also some things because of our intervention we could get even tenant farmers could benefit something. The agriculture workers, the artisans, they, their concerns also were uh, in some way they tried to bring it to the earlier legislation. But by removing the social impact assessment, the, that entire uh, possibility also is destroyed. So these are some of the uh, problems with the present and food security concerns. Food security concerns, even the earlier bill, we were not happy. They said multi crop land. To, to the acquiring of multi crop land, there were some, uh, some constraints which they brought in that legislation. We said it should not be just multi crop land. Because even if you see large parts of India, it is dry land agriculture. And may not be in many parts, it's not multi crop also. Uh, they meant irrigated multi crop only. So we said it should look into all productive lands, and the prior informed consent should be kept in. We also brought in one more clause, especially in the uh, case of the infrastructure projects and expressways, that the land which is acquired should be only that much which is actually required. There should be a uh, proper assessment about what is the land required. And only that much which is actually required should be legal. There is a principle uh, which is, uh, uh, which we quoted in that, that this, the land which is actually required alone will be legal. This is because of our experience that the kind of land acquisition which has been happening, you might have seen the, uh, uh, known about the Patta Barso, protests against the land acquisition in UP. It was the uh, JP's uh, Yamuna Expressway and all. So there the kind of land that has been acquired, that time it was almost 3 kilometers had been acquired on both sides. That is not according to any of these acts. It is based on the 1894 itself. Almost 3 kilometers of land on both sides have been acquired for real estate purposes. Formula 1 racing tracks, golf courses and so on. And when the farmers were given something like 400 rupees a square meter and the, uh, the land prices escalate with all these coming up and very immediately after buying it at such a cheap rate, um, it was increased to more than 100 times when, when it was sold to the other uh, people who wanted to um, buy land for some other building purposes. So the farmers are seeing this and uh, then the earlier act also mentioned about some added how farmers would get some benefit from it, uh, whatever industry comes, whatever development ha happens, a share in the development. 
these kind of things seem to be further diluted by this particular land acquisition ordinance. I think I will stop here and speak more when you, uh, there is a discussion. I have some more issues which I would like to place before you. In the course of the discussion, I will keep those uh, for the discussion. Thank you for hearing. Yes, yes, sir. Please. Yeah, we can start. See, uh, I've been watching the TV debates uh, in the Rajasthan uh, side. There's something that is talked all the time, four times, four times, four times. Actually, that's a bad misnomer because the basic price that has been actually described in the registration point when you sell a land. He is what is the government's uh, things. For example, you know, the balcony, which is actually, if you want to sell or buy a land or a house, uh, there is a bad minimum for registration. And that registration only is what is put in. And four times of that is given, which is much less than the market price. Okay. So this is something which is, you know, they, they forcefully tell, oh, four times they are given. This is actually very public. Second thing, I myself have some land around Bangalore. And uh, that is, uh, you know, the most of it has been acquired for the peripheral group. Okay. Now, the normal tendency in the 1894 Act, the one thing good about, at least, one thing good about the earlier Act was the government for the government purposes, which is now completely going away. Now, the peripheral road in Bangalore, which is 133 kilometers, every 12 kilometers, every 12 kilometers that they acquire, acquire, try to acquire. They acquire another 12 acres of land. You see, originally, 100 meters were to be acquired around this peripheral road. You know, this is the inner circle, inner uh, ring road. There is subsequent peripheral ring road, which is 133 uh, kilometers around this place. And now, they acquire, try to acquire 100 meters. It was too much. Okay, then finally it went to the Supreme Court and the Supreme Court actually said you can acquire at best what you need, 75 meters, 25, 75 uh, meters correct, and 25 meters with the left to the farmer, etc., which is developed. It is actually stalled because of the same legislation, because now they don't know how to give compensation. And now the basic problem in land acquisition, which is actually important to know, they notify it. And called 4 1 to be killed, and 5 1 to be killed, 6 1 to My land has been going in the notification for 14 years. And you cannot sell anything, you cannot do anything, I am becoming old, and the compensation will come after I am dead. In literature. Because 14 years are over, another 14 years I won't be surviving. I am 69. And therefore it is meaningless. So, and you can't do anything with it because in the record of the land, it is notified. And therefore, you cannot sell it, you cannot do anything with it. This is another thing which is actually happening in the government. So far as the present, uh, this one I want to ask you. See, it is blatantly, blatantly Modi government is talking. I will give you one illustration to you. Take Bangalore Mysore corridor, okay, which is all valuable land. Alright? Now, one kilometer left and right. What are they talking? I have heard Gadkari, which is absolutely uh, I mean, it is absolutely cheating in my mind. I was sitting quietly, seeing the TV. He says, uh, industry. Which industry they are talking about? Which particular kind of, uh, uh, kind of uh, 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 jobs they are creating? What is that? Is it good say, what is the amount of land that you need for a small industry around the village? First of all, there are no industry that has come ever since what you are talking around the village. You can take my word. I come from a village and I have seen for 100 years, 60 years myself, I have seen nothing comes. Okay. Now, the main value of the land is only for the selling. In fact, you know, I should not use this word uh, when uh, Rahul Gandhi interviewed in the government, he said you buy by acres and sell by square. That is exactly happening. Okay. So, they actually buy by acres, kilometers and sell by. And it is extremely bad now. And unless some, something happens, it will be a very, very ruining thing. And also this has got another implication. That is, you see, the people who have money will acquire, keep it. And till the 
the land by its purposes. And so the poorer person, like some who doesn't have land, cannot buy a land for building houses at a cheaper rate. Presently it is not so because you can go buy it till you can find out whatever the market price actually you can buy. But if that option will go away because there is no land to buy. Because you know it will be mass acquired. In the, so once government comes into picture, the danger is that, danger is that you cannot do it. You cannot do anything. And it will be in the hands of the private public, whatever they are talking, at a very doing thing. So I think this is the thing that I think something more we should do. I think there is a huge advantage for the organized that you are talking because the innocence of the farmers, innocence of the poor, poor people, helplessness of the poor people has been attacked. This is something which is important for people. Thank you. Uh, before I go to the next question, I request you to be, uh, uh, be mindful of the time so that you can ask a shorter question. I have uh, some questions that I have myself. Uh, so even in the, when working in farmlands, there will be a hierarchy in the rural employment. There will be a landlord as well as agricultural laborers and uh, other dependents. So how does this compensation and rehabilitation? How does this? Uh, how is it different for all of them? Is it the same for all of them, or has it been changed? I don't think that's the point because you know, the land owner is Sir, I think I will take more questions. Oh, okay. Sir, I have one question. First question is, could I know that under what conditions government should impose this land acquisition bill? This is my question. Sir. Under what conditions? Under what conditions this government should impose this land acquisition bill? And my problem is in villages, sir. People, some they are doing their power, their agriculture from 20, 30 years, and sir. And they in rural areas they are doing uh, agriculture in forest areas only, sir. Forest places only. So they don't have their land papers also. Only. So now Telangana government is saying that taking back to their lands, their living places also. Then what is the solution? So I wanted to ask what about like uh, the owner having a part in the project, like the not considering the value of the land, he has a fixed part in the project, like 5% of the value of the project or whatsoever. Then if he wants to take the money by selling it, it's up to him. One question I have to ask, uh, as sir has pointed out, uh, what's the procedure for fixing the price of land? If the government itself is involved, then can we expect it to be reasonable? And since uh, will, I don't think farmers have uh, negotiating, you know, share at the table to if the government to if the government itself itself is fixing it, so will it ever be you know justified for the Talking about some 70 or 80 percent comes into some sort of thing. Can you be more elaborate? Like, is this the concept or some other thing? Around the 20 or 80? Okay. And one question I have to ask the earlier 2013, uh, it excluded uh, private hospitals and education institutes. But this. Uh, Law, this amendment conveniently includes them. I, uh, can you guess why the government is doing that? Uh, can there be any uh, uh, good intention behind that? Regarding that compensation, you told that one person will be given the job. Uh, so, my question is, is it? something proportional to the land that is being acquired or any amount of land then it comes in that way. My question is because the capital is the government of the land after the day. Capital is. Yeah, that's right. Some of the reasons are the reason of the day. 
So there, uh, the government is planning to acquire who uh, the land from 29 villages. It's a detention land, multi of land. And there, the main, three, uh, main issue which I found is that uh, most of the farmers who are willing to give the land are the owners who own more than say 10 acres of land who will not be affected that very much good, but the small farmers are the ones who are in the who are minority members are being affected and how do we tackle this type of issue? Uh, one last question is, I mean, uh, the amendment has so much ideas that they would accept even the consent of farmers at all completely, but it's fine for them. One uh, obvious thing I have is, is that constitutionally valid at all? Right to property has to be one of the fundamental tenets of the constitution. So, can this be, uh, I guess the court will drag it long enough, but at least in the legal recourse, if uh, the association of government decides to go through. Okay. Anything else? Okay, maybe I will address this and then, um, firstly, what Sir mentioned here, perfectly uh, correct. Uh, Compensation when the first draft of the uh, bill was brought by Mr. Ramesh, it mentioned six times compensation. Then they reduced it to four times for um, rural uh, area. And when we were discussing in our organization, uh, farmer friends from states like Tamil Nadu said, even ten times, <laughs> that still we will not uh, get a proper price because the uh, price is undervalued and according to the registration uh, and according to the government records. So that is uh, perfectly uh, correct what you have. And we did bring it to uh, the notice. We had mentioned that there should be some kind of a, uh, the local self-governing uh, and some kind of a consultation process with the people there and that way we should arrive at a compensation which can be. And uh, you mentioned about the Bangalore Mysore uh, corridor, uh, the nice road and such things. We have also been taking up these issues and fighting. And we have also seen how. Uh, no, like I said, you know, the regular road. Yeah. Now they want to expand. The they are also in their place. You see, you see, the question is, it doesn't matter where. Wherever they are, they want to expand. That's the whole point. That is the. It is nothing to do with nice set. Exactly. And people who are having money are acquiring money and political clout. Because if you see the uh, report uh, which uh, the Karnataka government had set an inquiry, maximum land grabbing has been done by people who are sitting and deciding the legislations for our uh, state here. That is one thing. And uh, another is regarding the hierarchy in land relations. Is the hierarchy in land relations, what happens is that the answer to a certain extent is there in this question about uh, uh, land being pulled for the capital in Andhra Pradesh from 27 villages. Apparently, it is something like 7,000 square kilometer area that is being taken. And there, you have many non cultivating households. They are holding land. Many of them, their family, uh, the children are in US or somewhere abroad. And since they are upward, uh, uh, there has been an upward mobility, they are mostly residing in Hyderabad or some other cities. And some of them even coming to Raichur and all that in, uh, into cultivation in a big way. So here the land is being actually leased out to poor tenants, agriculture workers. In fact, now there is no protection for any of them. Just on the way to IAC, I got a call from a Supreme Court lawyer who said there are farmers uh, and tenant farmers from this area who want to meet us uh, in Delhi in the next week because they feel none of the major political parties there have taken up this issue so far. So this, uh, these hierarchies are there and that is when the uh, agriculture worker, whatever they are providing is for one job per family. It is, uh, and there is it is only the land owner who has the, and that is where this question is important. In Karnataka, you are talking about Telangana. In Karnataka, there are about 20 lakh forest land cultivators. People having uh, half an acre, one acre, below 10 acres in any case. And 
by this latest ordinance, they have also brought in that state governments should make a survey of government lands. So, make a survey implies that those who are occupying those lands without patta should be evicted from it. And the Karnataka government, it is a Congress led government, they have already started some process in this uh, direction. Telangana is a, uh, the Telangana Rashtra Samhita uh, is ruling there, they have also come up with similar steps. It is happening in other uh, places too. Under what conditions the government should impose land acquisition? I think we, uh, what we are saying is it should not be imposed for scheme. And if it should be, uh, if there should be land acquisition for some project, then the principle of prior informed consent, the concern of the safeguard for food security, the social impact assessment, these should surely be taken into discussion. Point there. Yeah. See, the public purpose, public cause, like railway, etc. Yeah. There is no consent required. Yeah. Correct? Yeah. And therefore, government can take only for public purposes, when it is specified that consent is not required. For all other purposes is what the consent was. Yeah, but what I am telling is, a lot of uh, projects, now they have exempted in the name of national security and so on. And that should all go. Yeah. yeah. That, that, that is what we are saying. Absolutely. And, uh, and also we say that there should be a national and state land use uh, commission or land use board in a, which will have a proper land use plan at the state and national level. So you see thus the multi crop area which they were talking about in the last act. They were saying about five percent of the land in a district can be acquired. So okay, five percent of the multi crop land is acquired and already cultivated. Then again you have multi crop land, again that five percent in, 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 in effect, in a gradual way you can occupy that. that is if you just try to uh, extrapolate a bit, then it can happen. So there is if we were not happy with even that provision, we had more stringent uh, provisions in our uh, suggestions. Owner having a stake in project, this is something which uh, organizations have raised. Unfortunately, the government has only said something like some annuity, some uh, minimal amount on a regular basis that is uh, uh, for few years would be given and so on. They have not accepted this particular thing. The issue of 70% or 80% concerns. The earlier thing was for a government purpose, that is a public purpose if you are taking uh, land, then 70% consent of all people in that area should be taken into account, wherever the land. And for a public private uh, partnership project, 80% of the concern should be taken into account. That was the, and here how we were in some, the early act was talking about especially the scheduled areas, the tribal areas, that it should be uh, just based on whatever the panchayat takes. We were of the opinion, the Gram Sabha, because there is the panchayat extension to scheduled areas, the PESA uh, has certain specific uh, regulations and under the Forest Rights Act also there are some protection for these areas that should be uh, maintained but the government has not been uh, in a mood to accept that. And uh, one person job is it proportional to the land acquired? No it is not, uh, not. Uh, it is, they have just mentioned about it that whichever families especially the agriculture workers and families are involved their one person would be given. But then what about the artisans who are there, what about the, even the farmer families itself, what about their jobs, that is also not very clear in this uh, uh, land ordinance which has come up here. Whether legally we can question on this uh, concept, I think some groups have, are planning for filing a PIL into this issue. But uh, we are trying to uh, look into look into different possibilities. Mobilizing on the ground level uh, in the parliament, the legal recourse, and they are also prepared of that this government will push through this.
okay? And wherever unjust acquisition is going on, whatever way possible, we will do this. And thus, we have our own, not everywhere that the distance of our we have our own two more members across the country. We are trying to educate the uh, farming community, the agriculture workers about their rights. So that uh, is also. In many of these private hospitals and educational institutions, 
the you see for instance the Vedanta University in um, Orissa, which is back, is spread across around 6,000 acres. A university like JNU has just 1,000 acres, of which 60% of it is still forest land. So you can, it is anybody's guess why this was land of prime area in the coastal regions, but this land is being acquired and uh, in, for, in the name of tourism, they have promotion, some hotels coming up and these are misused for other uh, purposes very much today. There is also another issue which I would like to bring to your notice. There is this Delhi-Mumbai industrial corridor that will, that is, uh, that will pass across six states. We are fighting against this Bangalore mice. So this is six states and we made a calculation that if one kilometer on both sides are taken, then it would mean almost 7 lakh square kilometer or 17.5% of all agricultural land in this country would be uh, open for acquisition. So that is the nature of acquisition this government is talking about. And we have all been hearing about smart cities. Here, sitting here, I would just like to ask a question back to you. Anyone here who knows where Senapati is located? It's a place. Senapati is a place where it is located. It can be even a guess can. Is okay. No. It, it is a place located in Manipur. And one of the smart cities, 100 smart cities, is supposedly coming there. If you take the Indian census, below there will be an asterisk and below there will be a footnote which says, Senapati, there has been no census in Sena. For whatever reasons, we are not having census in Sena. One smart city is supposedly coming there. And that is predominantly tribal to go into the uh, June cultivation, the shifting cultivation. And who is going to be there? It is going to lead to extreme social tensions in coming days. It will, and it will just blow up in the face of the ruling class. Whether organizations like Kisan Sabha will be in the uh, forefront of leading that struggle or spotting this. Whether we are there or not, people are going to resist it. That is 100 smart cities. And who is wanting to come here? We, uh, if you see the Modi government or the BJP artists, they have been making so much campaign against China. Their entire how the ultra nationalist campaign which is there about the China border issue. We have always seen. Now there is so much uh, interest in China. There is a talk of a Bangladesh Myanmar industrial corridor. Myanmar India China industry. So from Kunming in China to Calcutta there will be an industrial corridor. And in India with this condition that you can take one kilometer on both sides. If Modi is thinking that the people are just going to accept his monkey bath speeches, he is not very much mistaken. I have just returned from Haryana. Haryana has just elected a BJP government for the first time. Sitting in BJP uh, houses which support the BJP flag, we have had meetings about the problems that they are facing. This is going to surely blow up in their face and uh, come what may, it will have its own electoral and other uh, repercussions too. One uh, thing I would also like to mention, there is this talk about how development is required. Development for whom and all those debates are there and what kind of development is also there. Another thing they say, educated people should have jobs. Obviously there should be uh, opportunities uh, of employment for those who are getting educated. But if you see the kind of exaggerated claims that they make, and the Moscow project was being spoken about, 
the Moscow claimed that of the 9.9 lakh unemployed in Odisha, about 8 lakh would get job because of the Moscow So it, 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 it would almost eliminate unemployment. This from initial days we are talking about employment generation, but it is such a solution, some kind of a final solution that they are mentioning. And according to the study by the Mining Zone People Solidarity Group, if not even 50,000 jobs have been created. So that is the kind of displacement and dispossession which these policies are going to bring about. And why the government is keen on it, there is a particular reason. They are talking about making it. Make in India, who will make in India, for whom they will make is also being debated. They want the cheap labor of the corporate who are in a perpetual state of insecurity, who are uh, migrating in search of jobs. That is one thing. If you see that some of these they write very without any hesitation. The Karnataka government under the Edurapa regime, we had a uh, integrated agri business development plan. It mentioned about how agri tourism would be promoted. I might have said this before also in my talk here. It says up to 2000 acres can be taken in the name of agri tourism and you can have what would have what was in that they are envisaging as agri tourism. Bullet cart riding and feeding of cows and goats. It is written in a government document. And the chairman, the deputy chairman of the Niti IO, Arvind Pandya, has said how agriculture cannot um, provide jobs, it is not contributing to GDP, so you have to go into industrialization. Farmers are committing suicide across the country, and government, uh, the ministers are saying that they are cowards or they are criminals who are committing suicide. But it is the government policy which is given. So the entire neoliberal policies is aimed at dispossessing the peasantry and uh, creating a large insecure reserve army of labor. They also have an answer when you ask about how food security concerns can be addressed. They say we can shop land abroad in the internal talks. So you can go to Ethiopia and uh, Latin American countries, Sub-Saharan African countries and this set of insecure uh, reserve army of labor can be used by the companies there. That is the, though they have not yet stated, it is some kind of indentured labor which during the British period they were trying, uh, they were taking, you have Indian laborers who have gone to Australia, to Fiji, to Canada, everywhere. It is some, uh, to Thailand and many other places. So it is quickly moving in that direction. But the ruling classes are mistaken, it is going to be met with very stiff resistance and that will change the post. Anything more? Anything more questions? What is small clarification? When you talk about public or these PPPs and... Uh, oh no, no. So when we talk about PPPs and uh, just public projects, right? So can you elaborate on what they actually mean? So would roads come under PPPs or they come under public projects? Most of the roads, now they have given to PPP, to the Republic Private Partnership. So, and the government in their exploration of public purpose, roads and such infrastructure has been treated as public purpose. And PPP projects, if you take a, let us say, any flyover, this is... I had a uh, friend who was working with the National Highway Authority a senior engineer who twice came out to us telling this is the biggest corruption that is going on. Firstly, the companies claim that this project is not viable. So, to fill that viability gap, there is something called viability gap money which is given by the government. Apparently, most of these projects are completed by just this viability gap money which they I just want to point out to you in answer of this also, or you can answer me. See, it is a mistaken notion that Muru Mukta is built. 
I come from a village, I come from many places. In fact, connectivity in terms of the road or the, or the place is already there as the what we call Karab and etc. etc. Maybe a small extension around that place is all that you want for, which is a very, very small question. So, if the focus thing to tell that I build a new road, that will be a new campus when you build it, that is a separate matter. But so far, the connectivity is that's wrong. Second thing that is actually wrong with that, that we talk about is irrigation. See, the irrigation that they are talking, by and large, today, major rivers have irrigated, major things have been done. There can be extensions of canals where your requirement farmers are ready to give the water comes from that. So, it's all actually wrong information government is talking. Particularly, Gadkari, who is actually building these things, is actually telling wrong. This is what, no, I have watched it very carefully. See, I, I do come from a region in the region, I don't know, not that. But the point is, there is all people who do not know, they think they are building. Third thing which I want to mention is what is that they are trying to which industry they are talking? What is that they are making? Make in India, what is that they make? We have no hope. What is that they are talking? Which industry they are coming for? I also want to ask you another question. There was a bogey of you know like Infosys Center where we are getting large chat government is. That somehow got vanished, is it correct? Large? See, it is. Infosys, you know, about four years ago in the Red Europe time, etc., they were all gathering, getting giving them the land, the free land. You know, they were actually trying to pick up big lands or something. But that did not happen if I am correct. Is that correct? Yeah, there was a question. Uh, firstly, let me address this question. The PPP model. So, with this viability gap among itself, apparently the construction, they manage in most things. Then the actual cost of the construction is also uh, taken over by the, from the norm. That is what, and then you have the total collection. If you, if anyone can make a study of the toll collected in a year from any of these projects here, apparently that will unravel what is the level of collection. So that is the uh, kind of, uh, uh, as far as PPP model is. So kind of uh, building on that, are there actually any public projects at all? <laughs> <laughs> No, actually you see, in the neoliberal case, that is from 1991 what we find increasing in the state is withdrawn. And state, uh, if this, the minimalist uh, state, these kind of arguments used to be there before, where state should be only uh, looking into dollar dollar, nothing more. And we are fast moving in that. So you have public sector undertakings, profit making public sector undertakings being just sold off to private companies. We have, in agriculture itself, we have the case of fertilizer companies. We have many fertilizer companies, which was just closed up. The argument was, we will get cheaper fertilizers and better fertilizers from other But when a country of India's magnitude, with crores of farmers, goes to the international market, that itself leads to an increase in prices. Because the possibility of this market is low. Now, for instance, phosphates. We are entirely dependent on China and Morocco for phosphates. Forget the border question. If China says we won't give phosphates for, to India from now, that, that itself will lead to a big problem for prices for the countries. And even phosphates, how the countries are uh, benefiting from it? Phosphate from China is being uh, in 2012 uh, 13 was ranging around 450 to 500 dollars per ton. Our government gives around 230 dollars per ton as subsidy to Adanis, Ambani's, and Tata Reliance. These are some of the and Mila. These are the companies which import this phosphates. Uh, so in that way, they are not paying more than 270 dollar per ton of diamondium phosphate. Our farmers are paying more than 600 dollars. No, no one has so far said this is corruption. This it, it just happens. No, no anti-corruption crusader. We have been raising, we have been raising and to, to, to be fair to the last CAG, he also in his report did pre-talks uh, about how Fertilizer, the corruption, fertilizers. 
some of the computer groups can be benefit from that sort of social economic prospects and not the farmers and producers. No, you see, earlier when the subsidy was given, the government was fixing the price. So what happens? You can say change in the international market price. So according to the fluctuation in the market price, the subsidy is also used to increase. So let us say in a year, if the lowest subsidy given per ton was something like 6,000, the highest subsidy could be something like 56,000. Or I am just giving an example, that is according to the increase in the price in the international market, the subsidy also would rise. So what happened? The price is fixed by the government with a reasonable amount of profit for the company. But from the last three, uh, four, uh, from 2010 onwards, the farm gate price is determined by the company. So they are honoring the subsidy, they are also determining the prices. There is no price control by the government. So that is how the government is withdrawing from all this. Anything more? If not, I think I will see. Any, any more question? I think I will just conclude by saying the role of people in uh, sitting here in countering the campaign of the present government is that they are using all kinds of mechanisms, social media in a big way. They are using the big uh, media houses for their campaigns. A lot of advertisements from the side of government, I think need not necessarily be just by listening to me, but you also trying to understand more about some of these, what, are, what is the reality, it would be good if you can play in your own humble role in countering this campaign. It will help the present movement 